My name is Chris Comello, and the Stewardship Committee of Pilgrim Lutheran Church has asked me to give a testimony in honor of the class of 2020 at Pilgrim Lutheran School. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Every generation, every community, every church, and every school has its own vocabulary, its own trigger words and phrases, its own language. For those of us who work in schools, we have all had the experience of walking into a conversation among students and catching snippets of words and expressions that might sound bewildering or utterly foreign to us. Over the years, I've heard about people who are bougie, dusty, and rad. And I have become familiar with the language of Middle Earth, Hogwarts, and Minecraft. And Pilgrim Lutheran Church and School also has its own language. All of our students learn it pretty fast. We talk about class in the annex. We talk about the play deck. We talk about our chapel buddies. All our terms that people outside of Pilgrim might not quite get on the first hearing. Like all schools, Pilgrim strives to teach the language that we as an institution value most. We teach children to speak in standard English. We teach children about academic English. We teach children to be clever and sophisticated in the ways they express themselves on paper and in speech. But at Pilgrim, the most important language is the language of the Bible, of Jesus, and of all the words inspired by the Holy Spirit. When we teach about Jesus and the words of the Bible, we hear many voices and we talk about many testimonies of faith. Because Jesus spoke to a broad spectrum of people during his career, and each of them interpreted what he said in his or her own way. The Pharisees in their way, the woman at the well in hers, Jesus' mother Mary when she accompanied him to the wedding feast at Cana. Each of them heard Jesus in a different way and took different actions because of it. Often the disciples who heard Jesus speak the most in the Bible simply just didn't understand what Jesus was saying. They knew the words, but not the meaning. And at least not until the Holy Spirit came did they fully understand what Jesus wanted them to do. And then they knew, and then they proclaimed the word, and everyone heard it in their own language, regardless of where they came from. And so, when I have stood in front of the eighth graders teaching Christian studies, I've heard lots of words, and it's hard to know exactly what kids are thinking when we talk about Jesus or grace or anything else in the Bible. I know because I've witnessed it, these students have heard from teachers about the Bible. They know about chapel and worship and they know about service to the community. And in the past few years, we've offered each of the graduating eighth graders a chance to express their ideas about God and church and spirituality during chapel services here on Wednesdays. The eighth graders prepare for about three weeks with help from pastor and their teacher, Mrs. Andreen. They reflect, they write, and they practice giving their testimony before climbing up the pulpit to address the whole school. We invite their parents and other honored guests. Each student has a window through which the Holy Spirit blows and the fire of the Spirit gathers and the words come out. We as a school and a church have asked them to make their formal testimony of their individual spirituality. This year, unfortunately, they were not able to make that declaration of their spirituality, to make their own testimonies. And therefore, I'm here today 
to tell you a little bit about their faith practices that I've observed as their principal and their teacher. Now I know that the moment of testimony is difficult for an eighth grader. The Holy Spirit has to cut through all the conventions of good writing and the frightening aspects of public speaking. Some of their testimonies can sound a little conventional. They name their teacher who most inspired them. They identified the service project that they got the most out of. They identify how they practice their faith beliefs. But in all of them, when they give their speeches, there is no sense of righteousness. The pitch, the volume, the timbre of their voices might vary, but each eighth grader walks up to the pulpit and speaks honestly. And we all understand. We understand that we are hearing the spirit speaking through them. Now, if you were to speak to some of them directly or hear them speak about their spirituality, some of them may identify as a Christian or may specifically identify themselves as a Lutheran or a Catholic or a member of some other faith tradition. Many will be very honest and say that they don't identify with any faith tradition at all. And even though pilgrim kids come from a wide variety of backgrounds, they all are bound together during their time at Pilgrim in their learning about the Bible and its characters, about worship and its components, and about service and its impact on themselves and others. If you were to listen to their testimonies, and very often when you listen in class, they are openly skeptical about organized religion. Even as 14 year olds, they are aware of how organized religion gets caught up in discussions about money and ritual and doctrines that are sometimes murky in their meaning. They often can point out the hypocrisy that they have seen or heard in organized religious settings. They have often seen organized religion as an impediment rather than an access point for the Holy Spirit and for grace. However, it is curious that whenever they are asked to participate in worship, almost all of their hands go up to volunteer. Our eighth graders are very willing to read scripture publicly and serve in various capacities in a worship service. Now this particular group of eighth graders are not so interested in singing publicly but they still do a great job when pressed to do so, such as at the Christmas service, provided that they have some skilled coaching. They're witty and musical in so many ways. And I hope that those of you who know them will continue in your encouragement of them so that they might share their gifts with all of the pilgrim community. And we hope at some point through worship. As a group, the class of 2020 does read the Holy Scripture with interest. They might grumble about it when we're asked to do it during con the context of class, and they would probably not volunteer to go to a Bible study. But every time we have read passages from the Bible or talked about the concepts of sin or redemption or Messiah, they were, as a group, full of questions. They do have strong ideas about sin and grace and faith and how those things work in their own lives, in the lives of others. And in many ways, they are the modern Martin Luthers. They are the ones ready to question what we teach them, and they want to test established ideas about God and religion through the lens of logic and through the lens of pathos. And whether they are loud or quiet, extroverted or introverted, the members of the class of 2020 displayed great outpourings of empathy for others. We should all respect their commitment to being kind and helpful. Yes, they are still 14 and might need some prompting to help at first, but they do their jobs around school 
and for the most part, they enjoyed service, both as individuals or as a class. They might not see their joy in service as proof that the Holy Spirit is moving through them, but I think we certainly should. The class of 2020 is filled with the Spirit. The Holy Spirit and their spirit is most pronounced in their service to the community. They each have a service assignment each quarter and write a reflection about it, which they turn in in class. Their reflections truly are honest statements about their motivations to do what they do and how they and others benefit from their service. Some of them volunteer with other members of their home congregations if they belong to a church. Some take the extra effort to work with family members on special projects. But no matter what they do, they are all doing service. All of them do it. All of them write the reflections and they all exemplify how grace is working through them. They understand the impact of what they are doing and they are making the connection to the spirit. In all these ways, they are fulfilling the vision of Pilgrim Lutheran School. They are active and courageous leaders in their community. Of that, we can all be proud. Some of our eighth graders might be very blunt in their skepticism about Christi Christianity or about church. In past years, we have even had some publicly announce their avowed atheism but all our students, all our graduates, really do reflect the values of their education at Pilgrim. As they move on to some of the premier high schools in Chicago, they are the embodiment of academic excellence with a heart. I hope that as many of you as possible will join our virtual graduation via Zoom to cheer them on this Friday evening they are the culmination of 100 years of Pilgrim Lutheran School, and they are the hope of the next 100 years that lie before them. Their voices may be heard by many in many different languages, and you can be sure that when they proclaim the news of the Holy Spirit, all the peoples shall hear and understand.